Great to see you, CA Football fans. This is the season finale episode of This Week in CA Football presented by Geico. I'm Bobby Broyles along with Rob Washburn. The 2018 CA Football season unfortunately has come to a close this past mm -hmm. Saturday, Rob, with Maine's tough loss at Eastern Washington. Yeah, falling 50-19 to 19 is definitely not the way the Black Bears wanted the season to end. But when you go back and look at the game, it was much more competitive than the score would lead you to believe. Maine ran 90 plays on offense, had 32 first downs, and controlled the ball for nearly 10 more minutes than Eastern Washington. But the Black Bears did two things you absolutely can't do against a quality opponent on the road. The first is turn the ball over, which Maine did four times. Two of those came in the first quarter and led to 14 quick points for the Eagles and left Maine chasing the lead all afternoon. The other is give up big plays, which Eastern Washington was able to hit on several occasions. Give credit to quarterback Eric Berrier, who threw seven touchdown passes mm. and got in an Eastern Washington offense that piled up 568 yards against one of the top defenses in the nation. The final result, though, shouldn't put a damper on what was a historic season for Maine as it captured the outright CA title, won 10 games, and advanced to the semifinals of the FCF playoffs for the first time in school history. And while they'll certainly miss a talented senior class, the Black Bears will be back as Chris Ferguson, Ramon Jefferson, and Ernest Edwards return on offense, and leading tackler Deshaun Stephen and pass rusher Kayon Whitaker are back on defense. Yep. Like you said, Rob, great season for the Black Bears and a historic season for the conference overall. Yeah. Rob, what do you believe were some of the top moments you will take away from this season? I think my biggest takeaway would be the overall top-to-bottom strength mm -hmm. of the conference. It started early as the league went 20-4 and against non-conference FCS foes in the regular season, and CA football recorded two wins over FBS opponents for the third year in a row as Villanova knocked off Philly rival Temple and Maine picked up a victory at Western Kentucky. For a four-week stretch, there were seven CA teams ranked in the top 25, which is really unbelievable. Yep. When you have that many competitive teams, you get competitive games, and we had plenty of those every week in conference play. Whether it was Kenny Doak's 52-yard field goal as time expired to give Maine a win over Villanova, Elon going to Harrisonburg and pulling out a 27-24 victory at JMU to end the Duke's remarkable 20-game CA winning streak, Towson and Delaware trading the lead three times in the fourth quarter before the Blue Hens pulled out a 40-38 triumph. Rhode Island getting past New Hampshire 24-21 to record its first winning season since 2001. Or the final game of the regular season when New Albany's Ethan Stark bounced a 48-yard field goal off the crossbar to get their first CA victory over Stony Brook. Now, of course, it was capped by CA football making history by becoming the first conference to ever have six teams selected in the FCS playoff field as Delaware, Elon, JMU, Maine, Stony Brook, and Towson all reached postseason play. It was a remarkable year. Yes, it was a historic season indeed. Well, during Maine's historic run, there was plenty <laughs> of movement in coaching, and I'm sure that will lead off with many off-season storylines that we should keep an eye on, don't you think, Rob? Yeah, there have been three coaching changes since the season ended, but the interesting thing is all three of these guys are yep. familiar faces to CA football fans. Let's start in Williamsburg, where Mike London has taken over at William & Mary following the retirement of Jimmy Laycock after 39 years with the Tribe. Coach London spent two very successful seasons as head coach at Richmond, where he guided the Spiders to a 24-5 record and the FCS National Championship in 2008. Kurt Signetti, who did a remarkable job in leading Elon to back-to-back -back playoff appearances for the first time in school history over the past two years, will try to continue that success as the new head coach at James Madison, where he replaces Mike Houston. Elon moved quickly and promoted defensive coordinator Tony Tursiani to head coach of the Phoenix. While this is his first collegiate head coaching position, he certainly knows CA football with 13 years in the league as a coach at New Hampshire, Villanova, and Elon. Those three guys will be great additions to a conference that is loaded with turning talent, including a number of all-conference performers headlined by Offensive Player of the Year, Tom Flacco. Media Day in July will be here before we know it. Yes, it will. Make sure to stay with CAFootball.com throughout the offseason as we'll have plenty of coverage of the latest happenings around the league, such as the early signing mm -hmm. period that is currently happening right now, uh, national postseason awards, and of course, in a few short months, spring <laughs> practice and spring games will be underway. Yeah, you can continue to follow the league on our many social media platforms, such as Facebook.com backslash CAFootball and Twitter at CA Football using the hashtag CAFB. That is it from us for now. For all of us here at the CA, we want to thank you for tuning in all season long. It's been a great 2018 season, and we look forward to 2019. Have a happy holiday season, and we'll see you soon.